hey, if you want to be able to get Apple AR kit face tracking for your model, like I have right here, or have you seen right here, or maybe even you've seen on other popular VTubers, please watch this video because here I'm going to share some quick tips on how to do it. I'm not going to be able to cover how to make every single shape key, but these are all of the techniques that I use to be able to make my own Apple AR kit face tracking model for real time face tracking. Whoa! Real time face tracking model, real time face tracking model. Ah! <laughs> oh, what do I do with my life? Today, we're going to be talking about how you can get real time face tracking for your own avatar. I actually streamed me doing this process today on Twitch at this date. And if it's no longer there and you're watching this at a later time, you can also check it out on my VOD channel. I'm going to be uploading it out of order right after the release of this video. There's more than um, there's more than one way to get real time face tracking on your model. There's actually a plugin that you can buy for $10 on Booth, but it only works with Vroid based models. And you can find that link in the description down below. One thing I wanted to note is that Vroid is a software used to make VRM models. So not all VRM models are Vroid models. So as an editor's note, I would like to talk about, uh, I like how I'm saying editor's note, like it's a different person when in reality it's just me. <sighs> okay. So since the beginning of writing this script, I've had a lot of people ask me about face it and auto rig. And basically I think the best way to think about it is kind of like um, an apple. So think about your model like an apple and plugins like face it and auto rig pro. They're kind of like those push down um, apple cutters. It, they will certainly cut the apple but they won't really do a great job all of the time. And often after you cut the apple with those things, you'll have to go back in and you'll have to get your knife and like cut, like making sure all the pieces are the same shape. And sometimes you'll have to get a little bit of the core out. Well, it's kind of the same thing with these plugins. They're not really meant to be an all in one solution that will do everything automatically for you. You will have to do cleanup. So in essence, you will need to know how to use Blender and how to do these things on your own anyway, before you use these plugins. These plugins are mainly meant to be used to save you time if you already know how to do these things. For $80, there is Face It. You can find it in the link in the video description down below. One thing to note is that this is not a magical solution and it will involve Blender knowledge and will have to have some cleanup. Basically how it works is that you're going to have to set some landmarks and it will generate AR kit blend shapes. And you'll most likely need to go through each and every single blend shape and do cleanup to make sure everything's going to work correctly. So this could end up being hours and hours and hours of work. If you've never done anything like this before, or if you're not familiar with blender, there is also auto rig pro, which is $40 and also in the blender marketplace. However, even though it has almost the same features as face it, essentially what it does is that it rigs the whole body and you can rig the face. It does not automatically generate those shape keys for you. You will have to generate those on your own. And there's a free option, which we're going to be covering today. And please note that it, this will actually help more if you already have a VTuber model already made. Before we get into that, here are some applications you can use for face tracking on your iPhone. In the video I covered before, which you can see somewhere here, it is out of date. I'm using face cap app, which is a tracking application compatible with unity and unreal engine. It's free to try, but costs $75 for permanent use and is mainly good for FBX models which most VTubers will not use. Now, if you're a VTuber, these following applications might be more useful to you. So there is Wide.io, which is a free application, and I actually covered it in a video that you'll see popping up right here. And you can pretty much use it in almost any application. And there's also a $10 application, iFacial Modecap, which is used by Luppet and VMagic Mirror, and some other applications. Oh, 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 and in the future, I'm gonna be doing full walkthroughs on other VTuber applications, like this one I did for VMagic Mirror. So if you haven't subscribed, please don't miss those. Before you get started, you're going to need Blender, maybe Unity, your model, Cat's plugin, and um, all these links are going to be in the description down below. Since we're going to be talking about VTuber models and how to get your VTuber model compatible with ARKit, you're going to need to convert your model to a VRM if you haven't done that already. I also did a video on it right there if you want to know how to do that. So today we're actually going to be talking about two ways that you can get your model AR kit compatible for face tracking. And we're going to start by covering the quick 
easy way, the kind of the cheaty way. And then we're gonna talk about the more proper way, which takes a little bit more time and some Blender knowledge. So the quick and perfect way, open your model in Unity. And if you wanna convert your model to VRM, remember you can check out the video, links will also be in the description down below. Click on your model in the hierarchy, then in the inspector, find the blend shape proxy script and double click to open it. Now open up the AR kit reference. You're gonna be using this to reference the blend shapes to match it to the facial expression in the AR kit reference sheet. What you're basically gonna be doing is you're gonna be adding a new blend shape proxy and you're gonna be naming it to match the AR kit expression. It's very important that you name it the exact same. Here's the cheat that comes into play. When you scroll down and look for shape keys, when you create a new blend shape proxy, uh, you can scroll down and you can see all of your avatars existing shape keys and what you can do is you can try to combine a bunch of shape keys like uh, adding a little bit here and there to try to replicate each of the 52 apple ar kit blend shapes this is not the perfect way to do it but in some ways you can get as close as possible now one thing to note since a lot of this is your mileage may vary this method though it is the easiest heavily depends on how many shape keys your existing model already has you could end up not being able to make or match all of the 52 Apple AR kit blend shapes. One other thing to note is that depending on what you're going to be using or the applications is that some programs will have to detect if your model is Apple AR kit compatible and it will actually look for those Apple AR kit blend shape names. So if they are not there, it will not properly detect or work. On top of that too, is that if you run into exporting issues, uh, it could be that you have a empty blend shape. Once you create those new blend shape proxy scripts, they have to have some kind of shape key value in there. What you could try is you could leave some of the blend shapes with a shape key value of 0.01 if you have to do it. And essentially you'll make it so that it doesn't really do anything. The main downside of this is often you won't be able to get all of the air kit blend shapes that you need in order to have full facial tracking. The long and hard way. First, you're gonna start by opening Blender and looking for your avatar. Then select the mesh of your avatar and go to shape keys. Here, you're gonna have a few options. You can make it duplicates. So if you find a shape key that you want to duplicate that matches something in the Apple AR kit blend shape, here you can just uh, set it to the value that you want and then create a new shape key for mix and name it accordingly. Remember, it has to have the exact same name as the Apple AR kit blend shape that you are matching it to. Another thing you can do similar to the quick and easy way is you can mix and match. So you can combine a bunch of other shape keys. Just try your best using the existing shape keys that you have to try to make the new shape key to match the Apple AR kit one. So now here's something that's a little bit more advanced that is specific to Blender is you can split shape. If you have the perfect shape key, but you only need half of it. So for example, if you have like the mouth smile shape keys that you're seeing on the screen right now, but you only have a full smile and you wanna have to be able to separate it from left smile and right smile, then this is what you need to do. Select the mesh of your avatar, then go to edit. Then select the part of the mesh that you want to be able to change and that you want to have affected by the shape keys. Now go to vertex group and you're gonna making a new vertex group and name it accordingly. Click assign and just to double check, you can deselect and select to make sure that you have it set properly. Go back to object mode and now select the shape key that you want to split. Here in the groups, you're gonna be able to actually select the vertex group that we just made that the one that you want to be affected. Now you should see the results on screen um, when you have those um, shape keys that you want to only have part of. To make this a new permanent shape key on its own, you just go to create new shape key for mix like we did earlier. Now, manual shape key creation. In the shape, so this is the probably the hardest way to do this, but in the shape keys menu, you can create a new shape key. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide it to its maximum value. Now go into sculpt mode. And with that shape key selected, now you're gonna use the grab tool or some other tool that you're more comfortable with. And you're gonna try your very best to create that shape key expression. Now you can double check this by when you go back in the object mode and you move the slider, it should have that new shape key created. And you can see the movement and the expression created there. Now, when you're finished, you can export your model as a VRM or export it as an FBX. If you export it as an FBX, you might have to convert it to a VRM later anyway. Bring your model into Unity and pretty much repeat the steps from the imperfect way that we covered earlier. You will add each of these shape keys in the blend shape proxy. Then you are going to be adding the shape key sliders that you made in Blender. Once you are done, export as a VRM into your VTuber software to test it out. What you're gonna find is that you're probably gonna need to make adjustments. What you can do is just close out of it, open up Unity, make the adjustments that you need to do, 
and then export and try again. Essentially, you might have to keep making small adjustments until you get the results that you are happy with. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please check out some of my other videos and a special thanks to my patrons on Patreon.